Let's talk about coil freeze protection and condensate overflow protection. It's really important to protect your coil so that you don't damage property or cause uh, malfunctions in your unit operation. All water coils like these here, a hydronic heating and cooling system, all these coils should be protected by field supplied low limit thermostats or LLTs. Uh, sometimes these are called free stats, but don't let that name fool you because even with a free stat, you can uh, cause a freezing condition that can damage a coil and then lead to property damage from flooding. So the best LLT application uses a capillary tube style sensor that winds back and forth across the coil face. I'm going to pull out this cooling coil so that you can see the general idea. So the capillary tube type sensor has an element that winds back and forth sampling the full coil face for temperature and when a certain amount of that sensor tube detects a freezing condition, that switch changes state and um, the freeze protection steps are activated. Uh, less favorable low limit thermostat types are uh, clip-on. They clip on to one of the tubes uh, or maybe uh, one of the uh, manifold legs and those sample temperature in one single location. So they're less likely to detect a freezing condition uh, in other parts of the coil. All right, so where do we locate the low limit thermostat? When the unit is in a preheat arrangement, like we have here, air out through the filter, through the heating coil, then through the cooling coil, and out the unit. Uh, you want to locate the LLT on top of the hot water coil. That's the leaving air side. So put that sensing element on top of the hot water coil. That way, if the hot water coil fails and a freezing condition is detected, you've protected your both your hot water coil and your chilled water coil that's downstream. All right. So second situation is when the unit is in a reheat arrangement. So that would be chilled water coil first, then a hot water coil. Then you need a low limit thermostat on the chilled water coil and the hot water coil because cold air will enter the chilled water coil first and then that same cold air is going to enter the hot water coil. You need a protection on both of those, uh, both of those places. The third setup is a reheat arrangement with a DX coil. So DX is a refrigerant cooling coil. And in that case, you want to definitely make sure you put the, um, the uh, LLT on the leaving air side of the hot water coil. Now you've got to watch out with DX. Uh, DX coils have refrigerant in them. So there's an indoor and an outdoor unit and that um, refrigerant system could operate correctly, in which case the temperatures don't become freezing, but it, with improper refrigerant system operation, you can have freezing coils, uh, freezing conditions that lead to frozen coils. So in those cases, you wanna make sure you very carefully operate your, your DX system and do preventive maintenance on it. You also wanna make sure that your, your uh, hot water coil has that uh, low limit thermostat installed to detect any uh, um, freezing conditions. So, what do we do with a low limit thermostat once it's installed? So it should be wired into the field provided control system so that the control system takes one or more of the following actions to protect the coils. Number one, stop the AHU fan. So stop the fan, stop the flow of cold air into the unit. Number two, start the heating cycle. Run hot water through the coil or uh, run chilled water through the chilled water coil too. Um, start the hot water and chilled water circulating pumps. Moving water is much more difficult to freeze than stationary water. Uh, number four, close the outside air dampers. If there's an outside air system, closing that damper will stop the flow of cold air into the air handling unit. And finally, alert the building owner uh, or the um, responsible parties by text message or uh, emails or by um, whatever kind of communication is necessary to get some attention at that system. In addition to low limit thermostats, the use of propylene glycol and water solutions can be used to lower the freezing point of the fluid that's circulating through the coils, and that reduces the freeze risk. Note that direct city water makeup uh, might allow the glycol concentration to drop over time, and if it drops, then it could drop to a dangerously low level that could then allow freezing to occur. So instead of a direct city water makeup connection, we strongly recommend the use of a glycol feeder to deliver makeup fluid at the correct glycol concentration, and that will ensure sustained freeze protection in your fluid system. Let's talk about condensate overflow protection. To reduce the risk of property damage from overflowing condensate, field-provided water sensing devices and auxiliary drain pans are recommended. 
floor level water detecting devices um, are also a good safety measure to sense and detect the presence of water in the incorrect location. Mm -hmm. Basically, anywhere outside this drain pan is an incorrect location. Auxiliary drain pans that are outside the unit provide a catchment for overflowing condensate, giving a chance to channel this flow to an improved drain uh, and to permit detection before damage occurs. In a vertical upflow application like the model NDB, the auxiliary drain pan might be difficult to apply but these devices are well worth the additional cost when you compare it to property damage. Finally, be sure to train the building owner how to use the equipment and these field provided protection devices. Following these freeze protection and condensate overflow recommendations will ensure years of trouble free service from your Magic Air Model NDB Premium Vertical Air Handling Unit. Thank you for watching.